So before we start discussing the going public, which is the next part of issuing common stock, let's discuss about the difference between common stock and preference stocks. Preference stocks. So now tell me, what is the first difference between common stock and preference stock? Quickly, one by one, if you give me more answer, you have a marks. If you will not give me answer, you lose marks, all right? So I can see who will give me answer and who will not give me answer. So tell me, what is the first difference between common stock and preference stock? Quickly, what is the first difference? Write down in the chat box. Why preference stocks have no voting rights? Of course, preference stock also have voting rights. You go to check what are the rights preference stocks they have. They also have voting rights. No, that's not the difference. That's the similarity. So what is the difference? The first difference is a uh, nature of voting. Required to issue preference tiers optional. Do you copy from internet? I did not explain you something about required to issue and preferentials are optional. I didn't mention that in my previous lectures. If you copy from internet, remember you lose your marks. Do not copy and paste anything from internet and just give me that copy and paste. You're supposed to read your notes that I explain you in the class. Following that notes, then you have to give me answer. You understand that? First thing is the nature of voting. Common stocks, they have a multiple voting rights. Depends how many common stocks you are holding. If you're holding five stocks, you give, have a five voting rights. But preference stocks, you have a single or one vote. You have right to give only one, more, one vote, no matter how many stocks you are holding, right? First difference. What is another difference? Yes, common stocks, they have a now rights. Common stocks, they have a primitive rights. Primitive rights. So, and here, no primitive rights. Primitive rights could be about dilutions, it could be about um, the proxies, right? Yeah, so that's normally the, the, the primitive rights, right? What else difference? I think a proxy rights. Another is a proxy right. The proxy right is not part of the primitive. So proxy rights. Common stocks, they have a proxy rights. Preference stocks, no, they don't have proxy rights. Right. 
what else dividend what is that what do you mean by dividend what do you mean by dividend can you please explain to me not dividend so it's claim claim common stocks they have secondary claim and they have primary claims right secondary claim and primary claim what else difference any other difference control yes control or ownership i can see that only three or four student give me answer and how about the rest of the students we have 29 students and just three and four students are giving me answer. How about the others 24, 25 students? If you will not give me answer, I can see who is giving me answer, who is not, I will give you low marks. Remember that and don't complain that why teacher I get low marks, right? Common stocks represent the ownership and preference stocks do not represent the ownership. All right so these are the differences between common stock and preference stock now let's move on to the next give three to four similarities between debts and preference stocks similarities what is the common thing between debts and preference stocks what is the first similarity Both have a primary claims. Yes, that's right. Both have primary claims. What else? Both have primary claims, then common shares. What is the next similarity? Yes, both subject to fixed schedule payments. Fixed schedule payment. What next?
what next both do not hold the ownership right both do not have right to be involved in any kinds of operating and financial decisions of the company right so these are the common things or the similarities between debts and preference stocks All right so let me send you uh, this file then we will move on so now let's move on to the next which is the going into public issuing common stock. So in the previous lecture, we study that we have a three different way of issuing common stocks right, that we discussed in the last session. So the first that we study was angel investors. angel investors. And second that we covered in the last lecture was a venture capitalist. Now let's start with the, that's we covered in the last lecture. Now we continue with our going public. This is the third type of issuing common stock. Going public. Going public divided into two different parts. So we have a two different way of going public. In these two different way, we have, the first is a private placement. Private placement. And the second one is going public. Public. Going public through, we can call it underwriting. Underwriting. The first is a private placement. Now, what is the meaning of private placement? Private placement means when you're gonna sell stocks directly among shareholders and those kinds of shareholders gonna be control your company. I think this private placement, we already discussed before in our, in, in our topic, topic two, I guess, right? This thing, private, uh, private placement, what private placement means, right? So means, so under private placement, company directly sell uh, 
sell stocks to specific people. These people known as the uh, majority of shareholders or the common shareholder of company, all right? Now, public or underwriting. Now, what exactly happened under this underwriting thing? What is this underwriting means? I think the same thing that, that I mentioned last. So remember, we, we discussed about the, um, the video, the video about oil and uh, drum manufacturing corporation, I guess. So in that video, I mentioned you about uh, uh, how companies sell uh, its stocks uh, in a market. So company can go to the investment banks. So investment banks are the banks that help company to sell stocks in a market. So exactly that's the meaning of underwriting. So underwriting is the process, is a process which helps company to So underwriting is a process that helps company to sell stocks among general people, general public. It's a process. So who is the important person in this process? So obviously investment bank. So obviously investment banks play integral role, very important role to sell stocks of that company in a market. So these banks, we sometimes we call them investment banks or we also call them underwriters, all right? We also call them underwriters. So underwriters generally are investment banks who are helping company to sell its stocks in a market, helping company to stocks uh, in general public. This is called a uh, underwriting. All right, I think the same thing that we discussed before: commercial banks and an investment bank. So is that okay? Is that fine? Going public, so going public uh, is finished. Is that okay, going public? So issuing common stock, finished. Teacher, I cannot uh, send your, your email. Can you, I send it uh, in uh, like in there in this uh, what chat? Which email? Yes. Uh, I send email, but uh, the email can cannot. Email about. See, Email about uh, the participant in this. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I already, I already received your, 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 your file. You already sent me file, right? I can see that. Yeah. Yes, I, I can see this file. I already received this file. Wait, let me send you, send you back. This file, right? Yes, that's fine. You, you don't need to send me email. You just send me here. That's fine. I already saved this file in my computer.
So don't worry about sending me email. So any question regarding this uh, issue in common stocks? Any question, yes or no? Student, can you hear me? Any question? Issuing common stock. No. No questions, okay. Uh, so let me send you this. So if no question, then um, we can have a break now. We can have an early break. And after break, we will uh, cover the last part of this topic four. Uh, the last part is a common stock valuation matter. All right, so we can have a break. So I'll see you soon. Thank you. Now we're going to discuss uh, various types of matter to estimate the value of the stock, all right? So in order to understand this stock valuation, you have to keep in your mind the basic things about the present value of the, of the stocks. How can we estimate the present value? If you wanna calculate the present value, we will discount the future value, all right? So discounted future cash flow will be equals to the present value of the, of the security, of the instrument, whatever instruments we have. So here we have four different kinds of matters to estimate the value of the stock. So the first stock valuation matter is a basic common stock valuation matter. So remember, we are discussing about common stocks. Common stock valuation matter. So the first matter is a basic common stock valuation matter. Basic common stock valuation matter. This basic common stock valuation matter apply the basic things that we have studied before. What is the basic thing, basic thing? So the basic thing is, if you wanna calculate the present value, we will discount the future value, All right? Discounted future value will be equal to the present value. Right? In other words, we can say that discounted future cash flow. So under basic, common stock valuation method, if you discount the future cash flows, if you discount the future cash flow, that discounted future cash flow will give you the present value of the stocks, all right? So remember, present value of the stocks means P0. P0 means the price of stocks right now. P0 means market value of the stock, all right? Market value, market value of the stocks. So market value of the stocks will be equals to the discounted future cash flows, discounted future cash flows, all right? Now, what is the meaning of future cash flow? What is the meaning of future cash flow? What will be the future cash flow of your present stock? Anybody has any idea? What will be the future cash inflow from the stocks. Whatever will be the future cash flow 
from the stocks, what we call it. Cash inflow in future. How can you cash inflow in future from the stocks? What do you receive from stocks in future if you hold the stocks? Tell me, what do you receive from the stocks if you hold the stock? Any idea? Anybody? Dividend. Yes. You receive dividend if you hold the stocks. So future cash flows means a dividend. Of course, future dividend. So if you discount this future cash flow or dividend, that will be equals to the present value of the stocks or the price of the stocks or the market price of the stocks. All right. So how can we discount the future dividend? Of course, same like as normally formula we apply, the formula we have studied in our topic three. So P0, which is the market price, will be equals to the future dividend. Future dividend is, let's say, D1. D1 is dividend in one year divided by one plus R, T. First year, if you receive dividend in first year, you discount it, it will be equal to the present value. If you receive dividend in second year, then one plus R, T. If you receive dividend in third year, one plus R, T plus blah, blah, blah. D N one plus R N or T, let's say N. So that is the formula. So we're gonna simply discount the dividend that we're gonna receive in future. Exactly same formula that we have studied before. When we study about the mixed stream, remember the mixed stream? We are doing exactly same thing here. We're gonna discount all the all the future values. But here, we're gonna discount the future dividend because cash flow of the stocks in future will be the dividend. If you're gonna discount it, you will get, get the price of the stocks, market price of the stocks. Is that okay? We will not, we will not go in a calculation for this topic because this thing, this thing we already covered in a, in a previous lecture. I'm just trying to make a connections between this stock valuation method and the, and the present value or the time value for money we, we covered in our uh, topic three. So this first method, is that okay? Is it fine? Basic common stock valuation method? Okay. So now let's move on to the second method. Second method is a constant dividend valuation method. Constant dividend valuation method. What is this constant dividend valuation method? We apply this method when company grow its dividend payment constantly, right? When company going to grow its dividend, company going to increase shareholder dividend with the same growth. For example, for example, company, 
promise to increase shareholder dividend, shareholder dividend by 5% each year. For example, company give promise that we will increase shareholder dividend by 5% every year. First year, your dividend increased by 5%. Second year, your dividend also increased by 5%. Third year, your dividend will increase by 5% so on. This is called the constant uh, growth model or constant dividend valuation method, All right? Constant growth valuation of constant dividend, sorry. Constant growth. Constant dividend means same dividend. So constant growth. Yes, constant growth valuation method. When company grow shareholder dividend every year with the same rate of interest, right? Now what this method is, for example, you are a shareholder. I am a company. I'm going to give you dividend. But before I give you dividend, I put one option in front of you. The option is, first option is I give you dividend, you receive dividend. Option two is I take your dividend back and I will reinvest this dividend in another project. So means your dividend will grow, all right? So means you're gonna earn money on your dividend dividend will grow. So you have a two, two option. So obviously shareholders more likely to choose the option two, but before choosing option two, which is they will return dividend back to the company and company will reinvest their dividend in, a, in, a, in, a, in another project. So before shareholders return dividend backs to the company, shareholder gonna ask questions to the company. The question is how many percent my dividend will increase? This is called the growth rate. That's the meaning of growth. All right. So here, grow. So they're going to ask how many percent my dividend will grow. So before taking dividend back from the shareholders, obviously, company has to uh, evaluate the project. The project company is looking forward to invest in. So company going to estimate the return of that project. After estimating the return, company will introduce this rate to the shareholders. Company will say that, okay, if you're gonna put money back in a company, we will grow your dividend by let's say 5% or 7%, right? That's the meaning of constant growth valuation math. So before you taking a dividend back from the shareholder, of course, you have to find any, in, any investment that will more likely to increase the shareholders money, right? Shareholder dividend. So that's why you can introduce, you can, you can convince shareholders to return their dividend back to the company. So your retained earning will increase, right? Retained earning is any kinds of money left at the end of the year, right? So your money um, will increase. So you're gonna invest back in another project. So this is called the constant growth valuation method. So formula is the same. You're gonna discount the future dividend. Future dividend, but here, the thing is that the dividend you are receiving right now, if you multiply this present dividend with the growth rate, that present dividend will be the future dividend. And then you're gonna discount this future dividend to estimate the present value of these stocks. All right, so the formula is P0, which is the market value of the stocks, will be equals to D0. D0 means the dividend company is paying right now to shareholders. Multiply by one plus G. G means growth rate. Growth rate means how many percent your dividend will grow if you invest in that dividend. Divided by divided by R minus G. R is the rate of return. G is the growth. So if you do that, 
So whatever is the present value, that will be the market value of these stocks. That will be the market value of this stock. This is called a constant growth valuation method. So you're going to grow the present dividend. So that present dividend will turn into future dividend. So you can write down this formula like that. So D0 multiplied by 1 plus G is equals to D1 because present dividend multiplied by growth is a future dividend that shareholder more likely to receive in future. And you're going to, this, this is, this has become your future cash flows. So D1 is your future cash flows or D0 multiplied by one plus G is the future cash flow divided by R minus G. All right, so you can write down this or this, whatever formula you like, it, you can choose these two formulas. Is that okay? The second formula, which is constant growth valuation matter. Again, we will not go in, in a calculation, just um, the, the formula and the ideas behind this constant growth valuation matter. So in your exams, of course, I will not ask you calculations regarding this basic stock valuation method or constant growth valuation method. Is that okay? Okay, so let's move on to next. If you have any question, you can stop me. So I will maybe explain again with the another example. Okay, let's move on to the third method. Third method is a non-constant growth valuation method. non-constant growth valuation matter. Non-constant growth valuation matter means when, when company pay dividend to their shareholder, but that dividend do not grow constantly. Dividend grow, but the growth is not the same. For example, first year, dividend grow by 5%. Second year, 7%. Third year, 10%. Fourth year, 2% so on. So dividend is not like fixed. Dividend growth is not fixed. All right. So when dividend do not grow constantly, right? For example, let's say first year dividend. So uh, first year dividend grow 5%. So first year your growth is 5%. Second year, let's say 3%. Second year is 3%. Uh, third year, let's say 7%. And fourth year, 5%. Fifth year, 5%. And sixth year, 5%. So you can see from year one to year three, your dividend do not grow constantly, right? And year four to year five, dividend grow constantly. So what does it mean? It means 
from year one to year three, you will estimate the future cash flow, which is future dividend D1, D2, D3, using basic common stock valuation method, right? So D1, D2, D3. After D3, when you have D4, your dividend is constant. Your dividend growth is constant. So D4, one plus G. So from fourth year onwards, you're gonna apply constant growth valuation method, all right? And if you discount all, if you discount all, if you're gonna discount all, whatever formula here, right? Whatever formula here, if you discount all, that will be equals to the present value of stock. This is called a known constant growth valuation method, which is the combination of basic common stock valuation method and the constant growth valuation method, because dividend is growing constantly for one particular period, which is year four, five, and six. So it's a combination of two different methods, right? It's a combination of two different methods, basic common stock, one by one, like a mixed stream, and constant growth, like as probably NUT, but not really NUT because in NUT, your cash flows are same. Here, cash flows are not same. Growth is the same, all right? So this is your constant growth valuation method. So that's your formula or method three to estimate common stock valuation. So, Tell me, is that fine? Is it okay? Say something about the third matter. Is that okay? Okay. So now let's move on to the uh, last common stock valuation matter. So let me send you this file first. <clears throat> so so now the next uh, matter is your zero growth model zero growth valuation method, valuation method. That's your, the fourth method, all right? So one, two, three, four, that's your fourth method, zero growth valuation method. What happened in this method? In this method, dividend, do not grow over the period, over the period, which means, which means company going to pay them fixed dividend over the period, time to time, fixed dividend. Dividend do not change, time change, but dividend do not change. So means time do not affect the 
future cash flows. Time do not affect the future dividend. So we can say that, so we can say that time do not affect, do not affect the future cash flows, future cash flows, which is future dividend, which is future dividend. So what does it mean? There is no any time. If no any time sounds like perpetuity, right? Perpetuity, which means dividend divided by R. Exactly, future cash flows divided by R. So, so it means P0 will be equals to dividend divided by rate of return. Rate of return, this can trade. That is the zero growth. The dividend do not grow. All right. That's your fourth method. So methods of common stock valuations are finished. So we cover four different methods. Basic common stock valuation which means discount the future dividend, constant growth when dividend grow over the period, non-constant growth, which means dividend grow, but obviously not with the fixed rate, not with the fixed growth rate, all right? So which could be like flexible, combination of fixed and flexible both, right? <clears throat> and finally, growth rate method in which dividend do not grow over the period, which means shareholders will receive a fixed amount of dividend. <clears throat> so these kinds of, Methods, we do not look at the time. That's why di simply dividend divided by the rate of return. This formula is similar to the perpetuity formula from your topic three, all right? So common stock valuation method is finished. <clears throat> so any question from this topic? So topic four also finished. So any question from today's lecture or whatever we have covered in the previous lecture regarding topic three, oh, sorry, regarding topic four. <clears throat> any question, yes or no? No questions. If no questions, then uh, 